Hello, children of God, and welcome to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello, and I'm Jim Nemechek. And I see, Barbara, we have Lysol wipes, Lysol spray, mm -hmm. a little hand sanitizer here. You didn't tell me we were doing spring cleaning during this episode. No, I didn't, but that's because we're not doing it. You'll be happy to know. But <clears throat> these products relate to our Bible story. Okay, I'm pretty certain here, but I don't believe there's one single Bible story that talks about wipes or spray or hand sanitizer. Well, you're right. That's true. Those things are not in the Bible, but I can still relate it to a Bible story. Are you doubting me? Me? Doubt you after all our years together? Please. <laughs> I think I know better. But for some of you who may be viewing this, you might want to define doubting. Okay. Well, it means you have a lack of trust. For example, if I said that I have a pumpkin from Halloween, that is still good. Some people would not believe what I'm saying. They would doubt that I'm telling the truth. This is true. Most people think that a pumpkin from Halloween would be rotting or would have disintegrated by now. Mm -hmm. um, but how can we know when something is true? A very good, very valid question. What, what if I told you the audience that uh, Barbara and I flew in a helicopter over an active volcano in Hawaii? Or that Barbara petted a live tiger inside of its cage in Aruba? Would you believe those things? Or what if I told you that I get up every morning and brush my teeth? That might be a little more believable, brushing my teeth, but you still didn't watch me do it. So you would be taking my word for it. Exactly. Those are all things that some people might have doubts that these things really happened because they didn't see it with their own eyes. This week's wonderful word is believe. believe. So, hmm, do you believe me that I will be able to relate these products to the Bible? Of course I do. I know you better. <laughs> well, if any of these products might relate to Jesus in a sense, these cleaning products, because after all, Jesus dying on the cross took away our sins and made us clean. You know what? I love that. And I believe that Jesus did take away our sins by dying for us. But that's not how I'm going to use the cleaning products this week. Let's look now at these cleaning products. Hmm. It says kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. And by the way, we don't have stock in Lysol. <laughs> uh, but because we see the label that tells us the 99.9% .9 killing of germs, viruses, bacteria, we trust or believe that these products will do what they say for us and help make us safe, even though we have no idea and cannot see what the contents of these products are that kill those germs. Yes. Well, today in our story, there's someone who has a hard time believing what others try to tell him. And it's the story of Jesus appearing to his disciples after Easter. It's an amazing story. Imagine that you were one of those who watched Jesus die on the cross and you're feeling very upset. And then suddenly you see him again. But there was one disciple who missed out on this. His name is Thomas. He didn't believe. Let's tell his story. Let's do that. So on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together and the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. And he said to them, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides and the wound. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, 
their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples that particular evening when Jesus came. So when the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and I put my fingers and hands into the side, I will not believe. This is why sometimes he's called Doubting Thomas. And now a week later, his disciples were again in that same room, and Thomas this time was with them. Though the doors were locked once again, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. Then he turned to Thomas and said, Put your finger here, see my hands, and reach out your hand and put it into my side. Mm -hmm. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples. And all those stories of the witnesses seeing Jesus after he died were written in the Bible. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus said that the people who believe without seeing it are especially blessed. I wonder who those people might be. Yeah, us. Because we haven't seen Jesus on earth. We haven't seen God with our own eyes. But we can believe that Jesus did come to live, die, and rise again. And even when things are uncertain, and we don't know what the future holds, we do know who holds our future. We may not understand the why, but there is always a greater plan, his plan. Mm -hmm. God is much greater than sickness or sin or death itself. Clorox wipes may dry out with time, but God's love and power will never fail. Believe that. Mm -hmm. And in case you're wondering if the pumpkin story is true or the helicopter flying over a live volcano or me petting a wild tiger, it's true. Yes? And if you believed me without seeing proof, you are not a doubting Thomas. And so just to close that circle a little bit, if you did doubt the references earlier than this week's wonderful word, this is the pumpkin from October. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is a real pumpkin. It yep. is not plastic. Uh, and she used it with uh, the children at uh, one of the Sunday school events. Yes. Yep. And then the photo of uh, our helicopter ride over an active volcano. Uh, she will show you that in a second. There's us getting on the helicopter. And, and then, then the next page this is... This is the active volcano happening as we flew over top. And then the tiger picture. This is Tessa the tiger from Aruba. Mm -hmm. And that's Barbara inside the tiger cage. And yes, she did pet the tiger. And no, the tiger was not sedated. <laughs> it, it was very much alive and awake. Yep. Every day of our lives, we believe things we read, like it's 99% point ninety nine point nine percent effective in killing bacteria and viruses so we should believe the Bible when it tells us that Jesus has risen even though we did not personally see it we should have faith and believe in what the Bible tells us let's not be doubting Thomases amen we're going to end now with a word of prayer, as we always do on Wonderful Word Wednesday. So I'll leave a space for you to add your own intentions. 
Dear God, thank you for the life of Jesus and saving us from our sins. Help us to believe in you and trust you even when we cannot see you. Help us to not be afraid and to remember that you watch over us. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. You may add your intentions here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Wonderful Word Wednesday. Bye. Bye.